Controlling rigid bodies is a common goal in Unity, especially when it comes to actors that need to move realistically in your game. In this video, we're going to build an animal and vehicle controller that takes advantage of built-in functionality to create a follower that looks and feels physically correct. There are a few commonalities between animals and vehicles we can use to design a model that works for both. Understanding the code for the model we're about to write will require you know a bit about physics, rigid bodies, and vector math, but you should be able to use it even if you don't. Let's start by discussing the characteristics of the model we want to write. Firstly, the force applied by the object itself is dependent on its direction, not including features like strafing or wheel turning. Second, we want our system to target a specific rotation and speed, both of which will be controlled by a separate controller, so we can use this for the player or an AI. This is based off of how some real robots are controlled, and lets you use a range of other controllers that drive this base controller, from pathfinding algorithms to simple player control. Third, these objects should both react physically to collisions, so we must preserve contact forces like impulses. Our model will also have impulses affect the velocity in the direction the object is moving in, so, for example, Running head-on into a wall will push you off and require you re-accelerate in the direction of motion. Now that we have an idea of what we're making, let's jump into Unity. You're going to want to make sure your creature or vehicle has a rigid body and a collider on it. Once these are set up, make a new script for your controller and open it. I'm calling mine Creature Movement Controller. Get rid of start and replace the update method with fixed update. This is run on the physics time step instead of every frame. We're going to need to have access to the rigid body, so make that a public variable. An external controller is going to set the target rotation and speed, so we need to make two more public variables that track those quantities. Finally, we're going to have two variables that represent how fast we're going to try to reach the speed and rotation. These are arbitrary, but the rotation interpolation is usually much higher than the speeds. There are multiple ways to implement this setup. For the sake of simplicity, we'll be directly integrating rotation with no physics input and our own angular velocity, which will drive the velocity update, which is impacted by physics. Since our rotation drives the velocity, we need to calculate the updated rotation first. To get the speed of our rotation, we're going to find the angle between the target and the current rotation, normalize it, and multiply it by our tunable constant. Finally, We'll multiply it by the time step. The time step multiplication is what turns this into a discrete integration. To get the new rotation, rotate the rigid body rotation by the angular velocity we calculated towards the target direction. If the speed is zero, we can ignore the target direction, which is good because it will be incorrect if the quaternion is constructed from a zero vector. You can then set the rigid body's rotation to the new rotation. Note that you must either set the angular velocity to vector 3, 0 here, or else constrain all axes in the inspector. The reason we aren't using angular velocity to update the rotation is because the way the rigid body updates rotation is not a simple integration, and we need to predict the next rotation for a velocity calculation to be able to work. Since the speed calculation needs both the original rigid body rotation and the new one, we're going to put the speed calculation in between the calculate rotation and set rotation. This next part, the speed controller, has a bit more vector math. If you're confused, look at the definition of these functions in the Unity documentation, because it does a surprisingly good job of explaining the math, probably better than I can. Starting off, we're going to find how much of the velocity is in the direction of the rotation, using the projection of the velocity onto the rotation. We can use the difference between the target speed and the magnitude of what we just got to drive the acceleration amount, like how we did with the target rotation and the current rotation. Multiply this with the speed interpolation strength and by the time step, and that's going to be the velocity integration from acceleration. You may notice I moved the difference into a new variable called speed error. The difference between a current state and a desired state is often called an error in many controllers. The only reason I did this was to make the code read better. Now that we have a velocity update from our acceleration, we need to increase the velocity by the update in the direction of the new rotation, taking with us any velocity we had from the old rotation. First, 
we get rid of the velocity in the direction of the old rotation from a new vector. Then add the magnitude of what we just removed plus the acceleration in the direction of the updated rotation. This net velocity change is going to be used to update the internal velocity using force mode velocity change on add force instead of setting the velocity directly. This is for better compatibility with the internal physics engine. The very last thing I'm going to do is to change the rotation set to use set rotation, which allows interpolation modes to smooth out your rotation if you turn it on. And that just about wraps it up for the creature controller. You're also going to need another controller that feeds in an orientation and a speed based on whether your game object is a player, an AI, or something else. I'm going to briefly show the player control script I've been using for this example, but this script could be anything. One interesting thing about the rigid body controller we've just built is that it works the same regardless of what external script is controlling it. So you could switch from the object being AI controlled to player controlled just by switching the script that feeds it values. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. The script isn't perfect by any means, so any suggestions you might have are welcome. Hopefully you enjoyed this little tutorial.